Well, hey there, folks. Welcome back once again to the Hop House. It's Eddie here. Uh, we're going to do another beer review. If you have just joined us on the channel, please like, share, subscribe to this channel. Share it on your social medias, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, all that good stuff. We're trying to get the subscribers up because I want to start doing some live feeds, some live streams, right? But I've got to have a thousand subscribers. That's what YouTube tells me. Um, I'm nowhere near that, I'm not even anywhere, anywhere close. So feel free to share the love. Okay, it's beer review time. We're gonna do um, gonna do a, a beer now that's actually local to myself. Um, it's actually a, a local Shropshire brewery because I live in Telford in Shropshire. I'm originally a Yorkshire lad. Got to the Yorkshire out the lad. Um, and I live in Telford in Shropshire. This is a Shropshire brewer. Over the last few years, it's gone through a bit of a rebrand. It's gone through a change of ownership. It was originally family owned. It's now owned by, I think, um, two or three American um, American blokes took it over and they sort of, I think, brewed the beer in conjunction with the original family. Uh, I think it was a, a Shropshire brewer that was not particularly with the times, if you like. It was a bit sort of stuck in the past uh, and these new owners have sort of brought it, boom back up with a, with a bit of a revamp on the logo and everything like that and some new beers and things that they have brewed as well. Okay, so what we're talking about, I am talking about this bad boy. It is Woods Brewery in Shropshire and it's a bottle of their Shropshire Lass. That's my other half, she's a good Shropshire Lass. Uh, it is described as a crisp citrus blonde ale, 4% on the ABV. The old Woods uh, logo was a bit different to this, this is a bit more contemporary. Nothing much to say on the bottle cap, it's just a golden bottle cap. Um, 500 milliliter bottle. They also do a bitter, um, a sort of a bit of a stronger best bitter called Shropshire Lad. That was their flagship beer, they've been brewing that for years. They've kept that on but they've also adopted the Shropshire Lass to make it a little bit sort of, I suppose for the more modern market. Uh, Shropshire Lad sells really well. It's your traditional best bitter. Um, they, I think they call it a chestnut amber ale or something nowadays. People don't like calling things bitter anymore because it's an old man term, you know. They don't like using real ale, so they use craft beer to, to make it sort of trendy for people like me because, you know, I'm with it. I'm trendy. Well, let's get it into the glass. Uh, I've done a bit of a shake up on the glass. We're going with the uh, old moot cider glass. Um, better for swelling, better for swelling. So, um,. Well, she'll open it up and get it into the glass so you can get the appearance and take a look at this beer. Oh, it's frothed over a bit on top. Hello, missus. I think this might be a large head. It described as a blonde citrus ale, so I'm expecting it to be light in colour. If it came out and it looked like a stout, I'd be a bit what? That's looking pretty good. It's not a bad pour either. Holding the head quite well. Oh yeah, I like that. They've done well there. Done really well. Right, let's hold it up to the um, camera. It is a transparent, it's a see-through beer. So it's not been uh, refined. It's not been bottle conditioned. Um, it's got a bit of a white head on it there. Uh, swirl it around a bit. Some very slow moving carbonation, that's good. Certainly is not a hisser in any way, shape or form. Um, yeah, that looks like, yeah, a blonde to gold nail. I suppose it's a light golden, a bit darker than a blonde, but it might just be this light. Um, for those of you who've just joined us, you may hear some, like a humming in the background and some whirring. My boiler's just behind the camera and it makes loads of noise all the time. Probably need servicing or something, but that'll have to get done once we're out of this pandemic crisis. Um, I, I, I've got a little microphone down here that hopefully cut out the sound of the boiler, but I don't think it does. But also the lighting, I've struggled with the lighting. So I've sort of filmed it with a natural light because when I go back and forth, it's sort of, yeah, you know what I mean. I go in and out of focus and the light changes. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a uh, smell for the aroma. So we're gonna give it a whiff, see what we can sniff. Yeah, I'm getting, um, it says it's a crisp citrus ale. I'm getting citrusy notes. Um, not as strong as some of the other citrus um, ales 
that I've had, but I'm getting like a lime zest. I'm getting a bit of earthiness as well, a bit of like piney. Quite similar to when we did the dry neck and we said it smelled a bit like raw onions. This is not really smelly raw onions, but there's a little bit in there. And there's a tiny little bit of sweetness from the malt. It's not butterscotch sweet, but it is there. Hmm, smell, it smells quite well balanced actually. Um, I have to say I'm getting a little bit of um, citrusy, not overly grapefruity, a bit more sort of limey, lemony limey, and a bit piney as well. Uh, and some sweetness from the malt. Right then I'm going to get it bottoms up and down the old hatchet and we'll see how it tastes. Oh, that's lovely. That is. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That is banging. I think they came out with a Shropshire Lass, or they. It's been going a few years, but since the rebrand, since they changed the logo, they had new brewers. I think it's up to its game a bit. I remember first having this. As you saying that my taste buds have changed. I remember first having a Woods beer. At the Shrewsbury Food Festival, it's usually sort of July time, I think, end of June, beginning of July, um, and it's in the Quarry Park in Shrewsbury. Woods have a beer stand there. It was almost looked like a little old round um, hooker duck stall that you find at fairground. It sort of looked a bit retroy like that, um, but they had a bar in the middle. And I tried the Shropshire Lad, and I quite liked it. It was, it was, it was okay. It wasn't bad. Um, and then I think I tried this um, and I struggled to finish it. But as I say, my taste buds have changed. I wasn't really into citrusy stuff back then. Right, flavours. Oh, the smell. Now I swirled it around a bit. The smell is very limey. Very limey, lemony. Citrus, but like a sweet citrus. It's not grapefruity. But that might be because the sweetness is there from the malts. So, that's a really nicely rounded beer. That is, that is almost like, similar to like a Hobgoblin Gold, but less of the sweetness, less because it's probably not got wheat in it, but it's got that really well rounded character that Hobgoblin Gold has, but it's, it feels like it's got a bit more care and attention put into it. So it's got a really nice mouthfeel. There's a tiny little bit of fizz, a little bit of carbonation, which helps give you the the body. I mean, for a 4% beer, it's actually got a decent body to it. It's not too thin or watery. Uh, it's really quite nice. In terms of flavours, it acts as a, as a as a jewel. So you have the the um, sort of hops that go around the, down the side of the tongue, the bitterness, the sweetness throughout the middle of the tongue. Uh, and then it lingers at the back end a bit almost, I can taste maybe some maybe American hops. I don't think it's something like a sitter or anything. It's not as pow as that. It's a bit calmer, um, unless it's a blend of them. I mean, Hobgoblin Gold does claim to have sitter in it, but it's got other hops as well. So maybe it's got like a British hop and an American hop in it. Um, but it is, sorry, there's beeping outside. I wonder what that was then. Uh, it, it is well balanced and so on the back end you get almost like um, a really nice sort of pills and a lager aftertaste but a bit more hoppy than that so you've got a little bit of bitterness but it's the kind of bitterness you get from like a traditional British hop it's not a really dry your mouth out American sea hop finish it's really it's quite nice and rather than dry my mouth out maybe it's because the the, the malt's still lingering as well and um, so it's like a bittersweet finish it's a bittersweet throughout the whole thing it is very 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 well balanced so rather than my boy does worry again rather than um, dry my mouth out like um, a citra type beer would it's actually making my saliva salvate salive come alive if that's even a saying um, and so, yeah, it's really nice. I'm looking forward to drinking more and more and more of it. Uh, I really, really like that. 
It's only the second time I've had it in a bottle. I uh, have had it on cask uh, since I rebranded it. Did a DJ event oh, just over a year ago actually. Uh, Woods own a pub in Shifnal, uh, just on the outskirts of Telford, called the Crown Inn. I think it's I think it's one of the ones that have closed, sadly, with the restrictions. But they did own it. They had some of their beers on tap. Uh, we went and did a couple of DJ uh, events there, and they had this on tap, on cask, hand pulled. Uh, again, 4%, same ABV. Uh, and they had another one, um, Sinbin, which was their beer for the Six Nations Rugby. That was amazing, but it was cask only. Check it out. Woods Brewery, if you're in the Shropshire, West Midlands area, um, if you, when we do get back into the pubs, if you see that, Woods, get a pint of it. This is a Shropshire Lass. Shropshire Lad is their bitter. Uh, the Sinbin is their rugby uh, themed ale. It's a gold nail. Probably a bit sweeter than this, but it's really nice, sort of sessionable. It's only about 4% or something. Uh, and they also do an IPA called Take 5, which is in a green bottle, uh, and it's 5.2%, I believe, or just over 5. Got five different hops in it. That on cask is superb, but it's hard to find on bottle. Now this, where did I get it from? I got it from Morrison's, of all places. It's actually, this ale is even on Morrison's website for their online groceries, so I believe it's available nationwide. Uh, it's part of the four for six pound, uh, as Shropshire lad is, but that's me, Telford in Shropshire, so because it's a local beer, what Morrison's stores tend to do really well locally is they will stock more sort of local brewers. So here in uh, Telford in Shropshire, I can get a couple of Woods beers, I can get Castle Rock, Nottingham, sort of Midlands-ish, that's more East Midlands, um, and I can get some some of the um, Black Country beers, I can get a couple of the Black Country breweries as well. So uh, again, West Midlands. So Morrisons tend to do really well regionally in terms of stocking regional beer, but this is actually available on their website nationally. I think it's about £1.59, £1.60 maybe, individually. So four for six quid you save like 10p or something, it's not 20p, it's not massive saving, but it's a bit of a saving. I'm gonna read what it says on the back. So it has a bit of a, a characterish description, I think, um, trying to make the beers a bit characteristic. So it says, hi there, nice to see you back here. Pleased to meet you. Most people tend to admire the view around the front and who can fault them. But now that you've made it, let me introduce myself. And it's got a little arrow pointing to the tasting notes. So Shropshire last tasting notes. It's gorgeous blonde ale, overlaid with a lovely citrus aroma, crisp, clean flavor with hints of grapefruit. I think it's too sweet for grapefruit. I said lemon and lime, um, but I am quite new to this beer reviewing thing, so I'm sure there's much more, much more um, experienced beer bloggers and vloggers and reviewers out there that will probably agree and say, yeah, this is full of sit um, grapefruit. Uh, hops, it does tell you the hops on there. It tells you the hops and the malt and everything like that. So it says it is Cascade and Mount Hood. Also, it does have a sea hop in it. Um, the, malt, the malts are pale and lager. I said it was almost like a pilsnery aftertaste. So that would explain that. Drink responsibly, um, serve cool, not cold. This was refrigerated, but it was out of the fridge about 20 minutes before I reviewed it, which just reminds me I need to take the next beer out of the fridge before I review that. Uh, Woods Brewery, uh, sorry, Wood Brewery, without the S on the end. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. I'll try and zoom in. Hey, a Wood Brewery. It's there, .co.uk. It's Woods with an apostrophe. So it's, it was originally the Wood family. And then, as I say, these, these um, American owners have taken over. I think they're brewing with a certain next generation of the Wood family, but it's not just Woods anymore. But they're keeping the name. Great Shropshire beer, and I happen to agree. That is really nice. I'll give that two thumbs up. Really like that. Uh, especially for the price. Even individually, £1.58 is great. They do this. They do the woods thing uh, a lot in the Weatherspoons. Um, so what you like about Weatherspoons beer, but it, it is quite cheap on the whole, and I think that's just to get the name out, out there. They also did a, a Shropshire beer festival called Shroptoberfest a couple of years ago. Woods were a massive sponsor of that. They had big, massive deck chairs where you could take a photo of yourself, and it said, "I'm a Shropshire lad. I'm a Shropshire lass." So they're all into the marketing, and I think they're doing well for themselves. Big up to Woods Brewery, two thumbs up from me, like, share, subscribe, get down Morrison's and get some. Ciao for now people.